fire and heat from gasoline being wasted, not producing one scrap of work or an ounce of power. And we're wasting it in other ways at the astonishing rate of millions of gallons daily. In order to cut down on this great loss of energy, two things are vital. Better driving habits, more sensible driving techniques, and of course, better maintenance. There are a whole lot of engines running around that are only half alive, causing the fuel gauge to reach empty faster. Ignition timing must be precise, firing the spark plugs at the exact moment called for at all engine speeds and under all engine load conditions. If timing is late, combustion won't be completed before the exhaust valve opens. Some of the fuel mixture will go out with the exhaust. This can waste as much as a mile per gallon. Advancing basic ignition timing too far in an attempt to get better fuel economy brings on bad side effects. There's an annoying sound of ping or knock. At high road speeds, this condition may go unnoticed because of wind and road noises. Eventually, major internal damage occurs. On engines that use conventional distributor points, basic dwell and timing change because of rubbing block wear. On these engines, dwell and timing must be checked periodically in order to maintain good fuel economy and performance. However, with Chrysler's electronic ignition, distributor timing does not change. Electronic ignition is a built-in fuel saver. Because Chrysler's electronic ignition system produces new car ignition performance mile after mile, it has been possible to extend spark plug replacement to 18,000 miles. On older cars with conventional ignition, plugs should be replaced at 12,000 miles. Why is this so important? They fire hundreds of times a minute, even at normal traffic speed. Eventually, as the electrodes burn, air gaps widen until the spark can't jump the gap to consistently fire the tightly compressed fuel mixture. Misfiring can also be caused by deposits that form on the plug nose. These deposits can conduct the high voltage along the insulator instead of firing across the spark gap. Now, if only one spark plug misfires half the time at 60 miles an hour, fuel economy can drop as much as 5%. That's as much as one out of every 20 gallons. A misfiring cylinder also increases exhaust emissions. The unburned fuel is dumped out the tailpipe without producing any power. But plugs are not the only cause of misfiring. High ignition voltage sometimes takes a shortcut to ground. Old, dirty, or damaged cables generally cause this short-circuiting. But good fuel economy takes more than just a hot spark delivered at the right time. If the carburetor air filter becomes plugged, the cylinders starve for air and extra gasoline is pulled in. The resulting over-rich mixture wastes fuel and can dilute the engine oil. This in turn can cause premature ring and cylinder wear. A clean air filter is really good insurance, so service and change it as recommended. Here's another condition that can restrict intake airflow. A sticking carburetor choke valve that stays partially closed even when the engine reaches normal operating temperature. The ratio of fuel to air increases and fuel economy decreases. On Chrysler Corporation cars, choke opening during warm-up is very precisely matched to engine needs by an electric assist heating element. This is actually a de-choking device which saves fuel by opening the choke faster during warm-up. Carburetors and chokes probably get blamed for poor mileage more often than any other unit. Yet, when adjusted properly, they're seldom guilty. When it comes to carburetors, your best bet is to stick to the specifications in your service manuals and service bulletins. Attempting to improve mileage by installing smaller fuel jets, drilling out air bleeds, lowering the float level, or tinkering with linkage adjustments simply doesn't work. Such tampering usually increases exhaust emissions and results in reduced performance and drivability. So, stick to the specifications. Speaking of specs, don't overlook the importance of the correct cooling system thermostat. If it does not maintain specified engine temperature, gasoline is wasted. This is important in summer as well as in winter. Next, let's talk about oil and its long-range effects on fuel economy. Sticking to engine oil and filter recommendations spelled out in the owner's manual helps keep piston rings, valves, and lifters clean and working freely. Protecting an engine against wear maintains fuel economy. Incidentally, the only type of oil recommended is designated S-E. Using the wrong oil or stretching mileage between filter changes can accelerate engine wear and can lead to loss of compression. When this happens, both power and economy suffer. 
While we're on the subject of compression and its relationship to fuel economy, we must remember that in designing engines to meet federal exhaust emission standards, engineers have had to reduce compression ratios on some engines. Lower compression ratios, coupled to major changes in valve overlap and ignition timing, tend to reduce engine horsepower and fuel economy. Because of increased public interest in disconnecting external controls to improve fuel economy, Chrysler Corporation must remind all service personnel that disconnecting external emission controls is illegal. Now, let's consider how the car's general condition affects mileage. Probably the most important of all is tire inflation. Underinflated tires squirm or distort excessively, and this increases rolling resistance. This, in turn, takes more horsepower and, of course, more fuel. Severely underinflated tires can reduce fuel economy as much as one mile a gallon. And, of course, underinflation causes rapid tire wear and handling problems. Badly worn or bald tires can waste fuel because of slippage. This is particularly true on wet roads and in winter. And, of course, they're unsafe. Steel-belted radial ply tires help to get maximum mileage. That's because they generally have less rolling resistance. Radials may appear to be underinflated even when pressure is okay. Actually, you can't judge tire pressure by looking at it. Use a tire gauge and check pressures regularly. Here's another fuel waster, improper front wheel alignment. If tow-in is out of specifications as little as one quarter of an inch, it can cause a loss in fuel economy up to three-tenths of a mile a gallon. That's because the tires scuff and drag sideways for every mile driven. No wonder rolling resistance is greater. Now, what about car weight and size? Obviously, it takes more power to get a heavier vehicle moving from a standstill than a lighter one. So weight is a major fuel economy factor during acceleration. On the other hand, at a constant speed, weight is much less important. Once the vehicle is rolling, it doesn't take much more power to maintain speed with a heavier vehicle than a lighter one. In other words, from a standpoint of weight, it's acceleration, speed changes, and hills that guzzle up fuel fast. That's why driving habits and driving conditions have such a big effect on mileage. Car size is another matter. At highway speeds, car size and shape are more important fuel economy factors than weight. It's easy to understand why it takes more power to push a big object through the air than a smaller one. Anything that increases air resistance also increases fuel consumption. Ski and luggage racks upset the smooth flow of air over the body, particularly when loaded. Towing a trailer also takes extra power because of increased air resistance as well as weight. The engine must dig in harder to maintain road speed and fuel economy suffers. Of course, the shape, size and weight of the trailer affects mileage. Headwinds increase air resistance. If it's blowing 18 miles an hour while driving at highway speeds, Fuel economy losses can suffer as much as two miles a gallon. Speaking of speed, maximum fuel economy can generally be achieved at about 40 miles an hour. At that speed, today's engines are at or near peak efficiency and deliver good mileage. And each time road speed is boosted five miles an hour over 50, roughly one mile per gallon is lost. Increasing speed from 50 to 70 is not only illegal, it can decrease mileage as much as four miles per gallon. What's more, Maintaining a steady road speed also helps mileage. Varying speed up and down only five miles an hour at speeds of 50 and above can cause as much as a 9% fuel loss. Chrysler's speed control system maintains the steady road speeds, so important for maximum fuel economy on highways. However, only the driver can control acceleration from a standstill. Starting out easily and smoothly in order to reach traffic or highway speeds takes a relatively small amount of horsepower. This is a sure way to save fuel. On the other hand, bursts of acceleration require more horsepower, and that burns up fuel faster than moderate acceleration. And of course, jackrabbit starts are a sure way to waste gasoline. Incidentally, Chrysler's optional new fuel pacer system can help the driver get better fuel economy. A vacuum-operated switch turns on the left fender-mounted turn signal indicator lamp to warn of fuel-wasting throttle changes. You'll find detailed information on how it works in the reference book. Here are a few more tips. Pacing the car with traffic flow saves fuel. Anticipate traffic light changes and stop signs. Unnecessary braking is a sure way to waste fuel. Never let the engine idle for long periods. 
Remember, an engine running with a car standing still delivers zero miles per gallon. As a matter of fact, it takes less fuel to restart a warm engine than it does to let it idle for a minute. There's no need to warm up a cold engine. Once the engine starts, head out slowly. You won't hurt the engine and mileage will improve. That's because the engine will warm up faster under load than it will parked in idling. A cold engine may use three or four times more fuel than a warm engine. Fuel economy improves rapidly as the engine warms up. That's why short one or two mile trips result in very poor fuel economy. Next, let's consider accessories and options. Chrysler's torque flight transmission can outthink the average driver when it comes to matching engine RPM with the best and most economical shift speeds. Not only that, the part throttle downshift feature is a real fuel saver. This is especially economical in city traffic conditions. There's no need to floor the accelerator to get a downshift. A numerically lower rear axle ratio reduces engine RPM in relation to wheel revolutions. These economy axle ratios save fuel and help engines stay young longer. However, a numerically higher ratio may prove more economical in hilly areas. Remember, an engine that can power a car easily up steep grades without opening the throttle too wide gives the best return on a gallon of gas. Next, let's talk about power steering. It soaks up only a pinch of horsepower when driving straight ahead, a little more in city traffic conditions. The added safety and convenience of power steering is far more important than the small amount of fuel it takes. What about comfort? Chrysler's air conditioning system is not as much of a luxury as some may think. At highway speeds, it may reduce mileage one or one and a half miles per gallon, but on hot summer days when cooling is actually needed, this is a small price to pay for the comfort it provides. Besides, the cost in fuel economy is easily balanced by dropping car speed five miles an hour, by economical acceleration, by planning ahead and eliminating unnecessary shopping trips. Since Chrysler's outside air ventilation is built into the air conditioning system, comfort can often be maintained with the selector on vent instead of AC or max AC. How about those magic mileage gadgets and miracle gimmicks that claim astronomical fuel economy? The ones we've seen simply don't deliver the kind of mileage they promise. The reference book has additional facts on the phony fuel savers. Another book worth reading, Chrysler Corporation's Better Gasoline Mileage. It's loaded with facts about fuel economy and how you can save gasoline. Chrysler vehicles are engineered for good mileage. Whether or not they deliver the fuel economy designed into them depends on how well they're maintained and how sensibly they're driven. Thank you.